so there we are uh, the question is very good question these two are very very good question excellent questions actually so let's see full worked example on july 1st 2008 crystal acquired 60000 dollars i'm sorry 60000 sorry 60000 actually in quantity in units of 1 lakh shares in pebble so crystal has acquired almost all how much percent of shares here 60% can we say so 40% goes to non controlling interest okay uh, the same thing you can kind of check here so 40% goes to nci 60% is parent share in the subsidiary the draft statements of profit or loss and other comprehensive income of both companies at 31st december 2008 are shown below so you can see the draft statements even the revenue crystal and pebbles these are single set of statements revenue cost of sales gross profit other income dividend received from pebble that is also given being an investor they are entitled to get distribution cost administrative expense finance cost profit before tax income tax all things are given profit for the year is given or other comprehensive income gain on profit property revaluation is given investment in equity instrument is given this also is a part of oci when there is a increment when you expect the when you expect the value of the equity instrument to go up okay uh, and that is a non realizable nature gain you write that in the oci section so you have the total uh, comprehensive income for the year this was a simple thing as everyone knows every tom dick and harry knows was what, what these are now read the additional information at the date of acquisition the fair value so here fair value the market value of pebbles when the uh, the who acquire whom here the uh, crystal acquired the pebble company so crystal is the parent and pebble is the subsidiary so at date of acquisition the fair value of the subsidiary's assets were equal to their carrying amount fair value were equal to the carrying amounts only just one exception here with exception of a building which had a fair value of 1 million in excess of its carrying amount so when the parent acquired subsidiary when uh, like uh, crystal acquired pebble so here we have already discussed who is the parent so crystal is the parent and the pebble is the subsidiary so when crystal acquired pebble pebbles assets were equal to their carrying amount but one of the asset had a fair value of 1 million in excess that means uh, like with exception of a building which had a fair value 1 million dollar in excess of its carrying amount so some xyz carrying amount it had the cap given i am clearly telling carrying amounts are not given but the uh, increment in the carrying amount that is of the difference in the carrying amount and the fair value is given to you as 1 million dollar at the date of acquisition the building had a remaining useful life of 20 years very handy for you this information uh basically to calculate depreciation kind of thing and building depreciation is ch charged to administrative expenses as i said you need to calculate the depreciation and you have to charge you have to put it that or you have to take it in the administrative expenses uh, showing it as a line item of that building was revalued so first you should see you have to prepare the statement for which year yeah the the statement is given july 1st the uh, parent has acquired the subsidiary so it is a uh, what we say mid year uh, what we say acquisition it is in the it is in the middle of the year correct july 1st and the statement is on 31st december year ending so they revalued the building at the end of the year and again what they got is its fair value has increased by an additional 1 million dollar that is the case sales from crystal to pebble were 6 million during the post acquisition period see there is inter company transaction inter company sales and they did it at a markup so see of course the parent is selling to subsidiary it's a downstream transaction we say it as a downstream if it's from subsidiary to parent we say it as upstream okay so uh, the crystal 
sold to Pebble this much million of goods after the acquisition, and uh, these goods are not sold to outsiders. It seems it is still in the Pebbles inventory. You know very well how to treat this kind of things, and the markup is also given. Crystal marks up all sales by twenty percent. So we will see that how to calculate the thing. Despite the property revaluation, Crystal has concluded that goodwill in Pebble has been impaired. So there is an impairment loss also that we need to take in administrative expenses. It is Crystal's policy to value NCI at fair value. We have to uh, revalue the NCI at fair value. We have to take NCI at fair value. Income tax expenses can be assumed to have arisen evenly throughout the year. This we have to. We will see the income tax also. So this question, this adjustments are given. Please tell me, will you be able to do this, or I shall do this? Yes, बोल के बोलो. I will do it immediately. Come on. Sir, please do it, sir. Okay, I will do it. No problem. So let's go ahead. So let's start the consolidation thing here. So this is the parents' revenue. This is the subsidiary's revenue. Let's take that subsidiary's revenue for half of the year. It's a mid-year acquisition. So parents' revenue, subsidiary's revenue, and what you need to remove here, you need to remove this intercompany sales. Okay. So I will remove this six thousand from the revenue. I will remove this six thousand from the cost of sales, but before going into cost of sales, I will see what is the cost of sales of the subsidiary. Eighteen thousand. I need to take it for half of the year. Why? Because it's a mid-year acquisition. So did it. Parents cost of sales, and this is the adjustment which we did, which we are kind of winding up now. But one small thing. There is a markup thing given. So if I take hundred as my cost price. 20 as my uh, like profit margin 120 as my selling price what do you think what is that 6 million na uh, sales what is the cost price please tell me come on please calculate be active come on mm -hmm. 5 million 5 So what is the difference now? Actually, whatever the sales are done, whatever the sales are done, are done at six million. It costed how much to parent? Five million. So the profit, unrealized profit, is how much? One million. So one million unrealized profit we need to adjust. And you already know, uh, like uh, uh, that one million unrealized profit uh, would be like kind of. when you prepare the balance sheet okay so that uh, like you know retained earning adjustment when we used to do in the previous chapter and in the inventory we used to do the adjustment please tell me yes or no yes sir all of you i am not hearing anyone's voice here megna do you remember that retained earning adjustment and uh, the inventory adjustment come on Megna, are you online? Yes, sir. So you don't you remember that the unrealized profit inventory is value is at a higher price. So from that we'll remove the unrealized profit, and from retained earnings also we'll remove. You remember yes, that, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, so here the entire uh, thing is in invent in the with the subsidiary, and they are not selling it to outsiders. So unrealized profit here, and the other part. Directly from retained earnings, it will be adjusted. So in in our this question, they did it here from the gross profit. That means they did it here and showed you that they are adjusting it in the gross profit. Actually, they can they can adjust in the retained earnings also when they do the consolidation. Okay, here when the half of the goods were unsold, na half of the goods were sold. So this half of the thing was the unrealized profit. They they adjusted here. So in this uh, actually. uh what the thing is here we have removed everything and adjusted the adjusted this thing in the inventory value but you know the another part from retained earnings they can do it in that question they did it they did it uh, with the gross profit in this question 
what they are doing they are not showing that treatment probably they do it in the retained earnings if they prepare the balance sheet but you know we are not preparing the balance sheet in this question not at all okay because they are not asking us they are they are only asking us to do the consolidated statement of profit or loss and oci so that 1 million is adjusted and this adjustment of unrealized profit is also done as you can check it here they have did that and we need to add to cost of sales because you know closing inventory will be negative and this will be positive so it get it gets adjusted so this is done point number 2 and that adjustment also almost all is done so now the next question is distribution cost this and this we will take but you know we will take the subsidiary thing as half of the year and distribution cost is done administrative expense have some adjustments so let us do those adjustments now so administrative expense is taken and here also it is taken but taken for half of the year that is well known this and this we need to calculate and this we need not calculate they have already given to us this thing what they have given it is crystal uh, despite the property revaluation so they have done property revaluation it seems crystal has concluded that goodwill in the payable has been impaired now do, we they have not given any details but they said goodwill's impairment has happened one treatment in adjustment one treatment in the statement of profit or loss so here we will adjust we will take the impairment loss in the administrative expense we will add that because this is an expense okay now let's take the depreciation part so they have not given the value of the asset clearly speaking in this entire question value of the asset is not given but they said that the uh, like uh, they have revalued it seems na no? uh, they have revalued it seems again where did they give property revaluation so the asset value has increased by how much please tell me 1 million If I take twenty year depreciation to this, can you tell me one million by twenty is how much? Come on. Five lakhs. Not five lakhs. I think fifty thousand. It's fifty thousand, na? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, it's. So the fair value, yeah. So fair value adjustment of one million dollar will be depreciated over the re remaining life. This is a fair value adjustment because they did not give you the asset value, correct? To find out depreciation, they just gave you the increment in the value. So it's a fair. So you are you are revaluing your asset at the market value, na? Fair value, na? The revaluation. So excess depreciation would be there or not? Please tell me. Come on, please tell me, please, please. Excess depreciation would be there or not? come on you can't be this mum when you revalued the property from some value and it has increased by 1 million dollar this extra 1 million dollar would definitely uh, also increase the depreciation of your asset na so the uh, depreciation yeah. is in, yeah it is increasing by 25000 dollars for 6 months because it's a half year mid year acquisition so this increment so fair that that we say movement on fair value adjustment so since the asset value is increased by 1 million the depreciation also will be increased by 1 million and that since it is mid year acquisition we take half of the year depreciation and we add it here done this is your administrative expense and this entire thing is gone now this is gone now just nci and other things we need to adjust so even the nci is not a part of all this but we have to do this because we need to distribute the profits na at the end we'll show so finance cost let us take the finance cost this question you would have done it was a easy question this into 3 into uh, 6 by 12 the next question is what is okay uh, i will give you some part as homework after explaining something okay
so this is done finance cost is done profit before tax so we will get the consolidated this thing profit before tax we got it here don't add that okay those are separate set of books of the companies this is the consolidation you are doing so here the resultant profit is a pbt now income tax expense this and this mid of the year 1400 plus this income tax deducted you got the profit for the year till here everything is all right no problems no issues the gain on property revaluation is 1 lakh we already know that it has been increased by 1 million something they said na so again it has increased by one additional 1 million so when they revalued again it increased by 1 million again they did a revaluation it seems uh, at the end of the year revaluation gain done and investment in equity instrument also comes in oci section so we will take this okay so this is actually the gain on property revaluation is all together they gave 200 2000 sorry but we will take pre acquisition or post acquisition in the books we'll take pre acquisition or post acquisition post acquisition post acquisition so post acquisition revaluation gain is taken investment in equity instrument this was done by whom the parent not the subsidiary so we will take this parents you it is not like pre acquisition post acquisition only subsidiary thing is pre acquisition post acquisition that is the common sense done we got total comprehensive income then what we are supposed to do uh just uh, take this profit of the subsidiary Thirty-eight hundred. So thirty-eight hundred, we will take half of it. Why? Because it is, we should take the post acquisition profits into forty percent goes to NCI. But not only this, there are other things we need to adjust. Fa movement in fair value adjustment. That also we should adjust now because we took the parent thing. That was the from that was the parent thing and that is in the group. Movement on the fair value. See fair value adjustment you did now. Your depreciation increased by twenty five dollars, something three zeros omitted. Of that forty percent is N N C I's part. Goodwill impairment has happened. It is not that the loss is only to be borne by the parent. It is also to be borne by the N C I. Because when that when the pay, when the subsidiary company was acquired, the goodwill got created. In the goodwill creation. we always deduct the nci is part correct or wrong please tell me hello yes sir yeah so share of so this is the profit of the subsidiary company of from that the uh, non controlling interest are supposed to get their share fair value adjustment also because this is the group account what we are doing here in the group we are showing things but nci is a separate part you already know that nci is a separate part nci is a part of the company so 40% is their share in everything either gain either loss okay so even though the impairment happened impairment was taken here okay and uh, that's the reason why this is the group profit now the group profit but in that impairment also these guys have a share so this is the nci is profit okay from this 7 uh, what we have here 7475 nci's profit will remove will get the uh, parents profit and then oci also we'll take 8695 okay and this whatever the profit they have apart from this 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 uh, uh, this is like the investment done by the parent in that nci has no role but this is the property revaluation of subsidiary so in subsidiary again they have their share of 40% so we will take this completely remove from this we get the total comprehensive income of the parent this is the question solution
you have to practice the questions without seeing we will also solve questions once we are done with the syllabus we will solve question almost all the consolidation has come to an end round now only one question is left over that we will see right now this is done 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 for meghna priyanka i think you have covered all this in f3 correct yes yes sir yeah this is done this is like some two uh, tomorrow i'll wind up that that three pages are there that will be done this is what i have shared the videos with meghna and rajeshwari meghna have are you following the videos have you finished them or still there associate sir yeah yeah more one and a half sir one video is there yes sir okay please so now please tell me are you able to follow up that thankly sir uh -huh. lightly sir on top like not much where are you fi finding difficulty if you can if you can bring the those things to part of the class i can explain na like problems when you are saying then uh, slightly not understanding problem but problems are what we have, we, we understand properly na because it is directly equity accounting associates whatever the associate profit are there in that whatever the parent share is there in the associate company that will be shared to the parent suppose 100 dollars is the associate profit out of that parent share is 30% so 30 dollars goes to parent if you have doubts you bring tomorrow we'll can sit and discuss no problem watchman sir in pending ha huh? hello you are saying something in tomorrow class you will teach inventory yeah, huh? yes yes inventory that's what i'm discussing the yeah, final okay so thank you yeah statement cash flows is done uh, eps is done today finished ratios is done one small chapter will sit and finalize this one no problem and this uh, this one is almost all today finished so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and presentation of final published statements is done So leftover parts inventory I'll wind we'll see tomorrow. This madam will finish leasing and taxation, and financial instruments revenue. Only four standards are there. Rest of the things are gone. Okay, fine. Now see this question and tell me one one concept we'll discuss right now. Okay. disposal so let's do this uh, concept disposal in this what is happening is the consolidated statement of profit or loss will include the results of subsidiaries disposed of up to the date of disposal that means you will only consider the results the consolidated statement of profit or loss will include the results of subsidiaries So you will consider the results only till the time they are not sold. Once the subsidiary is sold out of the company, that means it is removed from the company's book. Then definitely nothing to do with that. So till hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Till the time, till the time the subsidiary is, till the time the subsidiary is existing, or like you have not sold it till that time only you should uh, like consider the results of that company or any kind of profits or any kind of things or claim whatever you have you will be having on that company once the subsidiary is sold off no claim finished now so when you sell some company suppose you have a subsidiary company you are selling off that company definitely you can expect profit or loss 
and that profit or loss on disposal has to be accounted okay oh my god it got stuck yeah so here we are parents separate financial statements when parent maintains a separate set of books the calculation is very straightforward it is nothing but when they sell the subsidiary they will uh, like uh, they will receive some money and that subsidiary will definitely have some carrying amount so definitely if at all the carrying amount is 1 lakh you are selling for for 1.2 lakhs you have a profit if the carrying amount is 1 lakh you are selling for 80k it is loss understood fam so this is the case you will be seeing okay carrying amount is nothing but when you see it is similar to selling an asset when you sell a asset after 5 years of usage you will take the asset historical cost okay you will remove all the accumulated depreciation till this date and you will see the carrying amount of the asset that carrying amount will be comparing with the fair market value the difference would be the profit or loss on sale of asset the same thing comes here simple accounting now but when it is grouped the things would differ and this is what you should incorporate now okay group financial statement statement of profit or loss and oci consolidate results and non controlling interest to the date of disposal you should only consolidate the results okay and the non controlling interest also you should find out their value only to the date of disposal after the date of disposal the consolidation will come to an end finished show the group profit or loss on disposal yes what did the group achieve what did the group achieve or gain from this sale of subsidiary statement of financial position there will be no nci now and no consolidation as there is no subsidiary at the date of the statement of financial position is being prepared if it is a mid year disposal if it is at the end of the year disposal next year onward you will not see the dis the subsidiary in the books okay now the way to calculate groups profit or loss on disposal please focus here last topic then there is one question horse and hoof company question this question you people should tell me whether you will try this as homework why because after doing the entire chapter i really expect this question to be done by you if you are not getting we can have a discussion now what are we doing here let's focus the group profit or loss on disposal is the difference between the group profit so what is the profit or loss to group so group profit or loss on disposal is the difference between the sale proceeds and the group's investment in subsidiary of course the the group invested 1 lakh and they are disposing that subsidiary which they bought at 1 lakh and they are getting some money of 1.5 lakhs so definitely the profit you can estimate na no? the group profit or loss on disposal is the difference between the sale proceeds they sold at this price and the group's investment in the subsidiary they invested at this price this investment consists of now what is that investment let us see the group share of the subsidiary is net assets up to the date of disposal what do you mean the net assets the total of assets minus liability that is called net assets and we represent the net assets by what equity correct equity yes yeah so this investment consists of group share of subsidiary net assets up to date of disposal plus any remaining goodwill on the subsidiary minus any dividend received from the subsidiary in the period so what what they got what what the benefits they got they are removing everything so how to calculate the fair value of consideration receipt which i took this suppose they are getting this much amount if they sell the subsidiary company and less so they are calculating the cost of their investment how share of consolidated carrying amount at the date of disposal so what is the carrying amount of the subsidiary company at the date of disposal is nothing but net assets what they have in that subsidiary company 
that is equity total equity goodwill what they paid extra and less the ncis interest finished if at all dividends are there that also you remove if at all they pay dividends okay because you have to remove the dividends also because you got the benefit from them na so this is what is the the difference amount suppose this entire thing is 1.5 and this total thing is 1 lakh so 0.500 gain finished so now there is a question now i am seriously asking if at all whether you will be try this question whether you want to try this question or not please tell me or you want me to explain i will go ahead no problem i am very much eager and ready but i are you ready to do this question yeah please we will try sir i mean priyanka i will says, priyanka will try what about meghna you will try sir. sure Just see the question, but okay. See the magnitude of this question. If at all you are not comfortable, tell me. I'll explain. I'm showing the question to you. See, if you are not able to do, you can let me know. i can solve this question tomorrow and also take a small chapter and finish some small chapter because however we have to do the entire book mcqs also would come can we take uh, limitations yeah any of the chapter we can take i'm just seeing reporting financial performance is there uh, provisions and contingencies this madam will take she already told me uh revenue is a big chapter we have to take some time what we can do is we can take this specialized non for profit and public sector entities or accounting for inflation anything we can take and finish back to back okay so uh, you just have a look through even though if you are uh, if you assure me then only i'll go ahead or else no i will solve it right now just look at this So, you will do it, na? Now every day I am going to take a long extended sessions only. So be ready. Yes. Sir. Okay. Let me see if you are able to do this question tomorrow. Fine. If you are not able to do any problem, any issue, let me know. I will explain the entire question to you. Okay. The only thing what is going to come in this question is one case is the subsidiary has been disposed of at the end of the year. subsidiary has been disposed of at the end of the year one case is subsidiary has been disposed of mid year so there is a mid year disposal case end of the year disposal case two disposal cases are there these are the things second point is when there is a disposal of course you need to recognize the profit or loss so how to recognize that profit or loss for the group i have already explained you the concept here you can see this so this you need to calculate and very carefully you should see the net assets and all and here one more point comes into picture are you seeing this here are you seeing this here goodwill yes sir so yes, this sir. also yes. this also you need to calculate because this also you you are having in this calculation so you need to calculate that goodwill uh, you need to calculate the uh, fair uh, this one like profit on disposal okay and uh, these are the two crucial things that's it nothing more than that please try at your end not getting i will explain this full problem uh, fresh tomorrow since i am going to explain this and some part is left over in the statement of financial position some three pages i will wind up that also okay and if time per uh, what time permits i will try to take one question one chapter of specialized non for profit and public sector entities that i will take and wind up tomorrow okay sure thank you Thank you.